Husky fans, welcome into the season open of NIU Weekly. I'm Andy Garcia. Glad you could be with us again this season. Looking forward to it. The fall is here, 2023, getting ready for football. And uh, it's great to be back on the show and again this season. This is our weekly look at what's happened and what is going to happen in NIU Athletics. Welcome to the 2023-24 school year and another season of NIU Husky Athletics. Throughout the year, we'll talk to head coaches, administrators, even former student athletes, and other special guests. We're going to have a lot of fun again on the show this year. Also, we have a new weekly segment. All right, we're going to call it Looking Back with Bill Baker. Great conversation with the legendary voice of the Huskies who will retire after this football season. 44 seasons for Bill Baker. Unbelievable. We're going to talk to Bill about the different topics, variety of topics, and you'll hear from Bill every week as you look back at the moments, the people, the road trips that I've been a part of, some great memories, and we're going to talk about it and more with uh, Bill Baker, talk about his NIU career each week on NIU Weekly. And this week, we're going to get ready for the football, taking on Boston College on the road. This Saturday, we'll talk to Thomas Hammock. We'll review the preseason and, and a look back at what happened there and also get you ready and expect what we can see on Saturday, taking on Boston College. But first, we have to talk tickets, all right? Season tickets, mini plans, single game tickets, all right? Your best bet, your best deal is the season tickets. Check out the family plan, get three friends together, and you can get a great value. There's also a mini plan that offers tickets to the four Saturday games only or get a two-game mini plan with homecoming in any other game. Check out all the options. Go to NIUHuskies.com slash MyHuskies or give the ticket office a call. They're happy to help. Call 815-753-PAC. That's 815-753-7225. If you've not gotten your season tickets, single tickets, any type of tickets yet, Get online, call, get your tickets for NIU football, all right? Also, we need to talk a little more about after you get the tickets and coming out, supporting the Huskies in different events and everything. Got a lot going on in the fall. We're going to talk to all the coaches about that coming up in NIU Weekly throughout the season. All right, so we talked a little bit about tickets. We get you ready. Now let's talk to head coach Thomas Hammond, get his thoughts about what happened in the preseason and get ready for Boston College on Saturday. It is finally game day for NIU football as we get ready to travel to Boston, take on the Boston College Eagles. Andy Garcia, Thomas Hammock. Now, Thomas, in your fifth year, let's go back to the, the, the practices in this fall, in this August. Was there differences in this practice, in this fall practices, than in other training camps getting ready for the seasons? Is it the same? How was your thoughts on that? No, it was, it was much different. I think um, the maturity of our football team is a lot different. Uh, and, and one way you can tell that is after a day off, they came back with the right mindset, the right approach to attack the next day. And normally, you know, you go through training camp, there's two or three days where you wish, okay, I wish we would have did more, or I wish we, we would have got more out of that practice. I didn't feel that way this year. Uh, and I think that's a testament to the coaches. I think that's a testament uh, to the young men in our program uh, that they have a maturity, uh, they have an edge, uh, they understand the preparation matters, uh, and every day is important. Uh, they give you 25 practices for a reason, and I think we maximize uh, every practice up to date. Let's talk about the offense first, and Rocky Lombardi being back in 100%. And, uh, you know, we've I've had the chance to talk to him. He's talked out in different events. It seems like he's ready, kind of like a chip on the shoulder, like the unfinished business, Thomas, getting hurt last year versus Vanderbilt. As you've talked about, he's come here to win championships, and you feel, and I think a lot of us feel, with Rocky back there and back, it's the best opportunity, and he's ready to go pursue that new uh, MAC championship for 2023. Well, obviously, Rocky is a big piece uh, for our puzzle, but uh, I think he's very confident with the weapons around him. Uh, you know, we've been very um, selective uh, with what we wanted to add, how we wanted to add to uh, increase the performance on field, and I've uh, been pleased with, with how it's all come about. You know, when you when you add different guys, you never know how they're going to mesh. Uh, or how it's going to work uh, from an offensive perspective, uh, been, but been very pleased with the uh, um, the skill uh, uh, of our offense. Uh, obviously, you know, up front we have a good offensive line, um, but we wanted to enhance the skill. If you got a quarterback coming back uh, for a seventh year, you want to put weapons around him uh, with guys that can go out there and make plays, and I think he's feel very confident uh, with the guys that we added uh, to the offense. 
uh, along with the offensive line to say we can go out there uh, and play except, exceptional football on offense. What have you liked about Ontario Brown's practices leading up to game one here? Well, I think it's time. Uh, you know, he's been in the program two years. He's had some success uh, in, in, in spot duty. Um, but now he understands what it takes to be a number one back. You have to be the guy out there every day uh, consistently for your teammates, uh, doing, the, doing the things, the dirty work, uh, uh, per se. Uh, and he's done that. He's embraced it. He's had a phenomenal uh, training camp, uh, excited about him. And, uh, you know, I think if the sky's the limit uh, on him as long as he can stay healthy. Um, but I, I feel like he's, he's in for a big season and can't wait to watch him uh, against uh, against BC. But knowing you, you like to have that depth in the backfield, and it seems like you're happy with what you got going into 2023 in the first game. No, depth is really, really important, um, you know, especially at, at that position. Uh, the running back position takes a lot of hits, uh, has a lot of exposures on the football field. Uh, and so you have to have, you know, three or four guys that you feel like can have the ability to go out there and help you win a game. And I feel like we are at that point uh, with Gavin Williams. Uh, Justin Lynch has done a phenomenal job uh, moving, switching positions and then picking up, you know, the things, the nuances of the running back position. Uh, Kendrell Flowers is another, another young man we're excited about. Uh, along with Jalen Poe uh, and Christian Nash. So we feel like we got five or six guys uh, that can help us in the backfield uh, when their number's called. Um, and I feel like, you know, that's a good group, a good a good working number to have going into a season. Yeah, five receivers and tight ends. It's great to have Trayvon Rudolph back. It looks like he's healthy, Coach. It looks like there's no limitations. Seems like he's ready and confident going into the season. But we're going to see some other receivers, and one like Davis Patterson. Uh, a guy that a lot of us have not seen a lot on the field. Uh, tell us about some of the receiving core. No, uh, I think the receiving core, um, like I said earlier, we were able to strategically add some guys uh, to that position. Uh, Davis Patterson has done a nice job. Uh, Keyshawn Pipkin has developed in the program. Uh, Jalen Johnson is coming back, a guy we were extremely excited about last season. Uh, had an injury in preseason camp that took a lot longer uh, to recover than we anticipated. Uh, Casper, um, you know, obviously Trayvon Rudolph, uh, a young man, Malik Armstrong, uh, has really done a nice job. Uh, Dane Partridge. Uh, so we feel like we got some flexibility at the wide receiver position of guys that can come in and contribute uh, in a big way. And I think the most important thing is having the trust of the quarterback. Uh, and those guys have the trust of, of Rocky and Ethan, uh, along with Nevin as well. Do you want to be 50 50 run pass, Thomas? I know you love to run the ball. What do you envision right now as you start the season and, and how you see that offense moving? Well, you know, I think we're going to take what the defense gives us. Uh, you know, I think we have the ability to, to throw the ball equally as well as, as run the ball this year, which is, hasn't been the case uh, before. Um, and, and that's due to a lot of different uh, circumstances. But I really believe like we have the ability to be balanced, uh, to, to attack what's presented. Um, you know, if people want to load up and stop the run, we have the ability to uh, throw the football with, with with a quarterback that can distribute and, and wide receivers that can make plays. So, you know, we're going to be patient. Uh, we're going to let the game come to us offensively uh, and then take 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 the opportunities when they present themselves. Thomas, for me on the defensive side, if the defensive line can play up to what they can, and that you've got some names up there. I'm James Esther and Devontae O'Malley and Rayshon Thomas, just to name a couple of them. Thomas, if they can disrupt things in the front, man, they can have some huge year this year. Well, you know, we got a big challenge uh, this this weekend against Boston College. A big, strong offensive line, physical. Uh, their right guard is projected as a as a first round draft pick, and um, you know, is a great test for us, uh, a litmus test for us to see where we're at. But uh, I love the way those guys have competed this fall camp. Uh, love the way they they've developed. Uh, and I expect those guys to, you know, to be pillars for us uh, if we expect to be improved on defense. And linebacker, Deron Gilbert's a name we're going to know a lot about now uh, going into the linebacker core and Jane Dolphin. Uh, uh, talk about what you see at the linebacker position. No, I think uh, really like uh, those two young men, uh, along with Tyler Jackson and Devin Lafayette. You know, we feel like we got four guys that we can win with. You'll see them in different situations. Uh, but Deron Gilbert and, and Jaden Dolphin has a chance to be 
um, the best tandem that we've had in my tenure. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about two guys that can run, uh, two guys that can tackle, uh, two guys that can affect the game in different ways, uh, you know, stopping the run and dropping back in coverage because obviously, you know, to be better at, at pass defense, the linebackers play a, a huge role uh, in, in that process, them getting to the right spots, them getting to their right proper drops at the right depths, uh, that, that ties into coverage. And so uh, these two young men were both former safeties uh, that's grown into the linebacker position, uh, love their speed, uh, love their athleticism. And then you'll see Tyler Jackson in there as well and Devin Lafayette. Uh, so those four guys, we feel like, uh, give us a great opportunity to play winning football. On the back end, you know, you, you, we know names back there, Jay Sean Prophet, C.J. Brown, but you also brought in some transfers too that you're hoping can kind of come right in and help that secondary because I know you want to see improvement back there. This year. No, we definitely want to see improvement, but I also believe, you know, the transfers brought in a level of competition that raised everybody's game. And so, you know, for us, we feel like it was guys that played well early that might have hit a slump that are back to being themselves. And, and Javon Bird is a, is a prime example. Uh, his freshman year, we put him on uh, people's top number one receiver as a true freshman. Uh, last year, he didn't play as well. Um, but now he's back to the player that we, we always thought he can be. Uh, you know, young guys that develop. Um, uh, Amarion Knighton uh, is one. And, and Finley. Um, you know, Finley is a young man that's really grown up in our program. I think having Shad and Gabriel at the cornerback position has really helped them elevate their game um, and their, comp their competitive nature uh, of two young guys that played for us last year that will be in the mix this year as well. What do you see in the special teams? Uh, and, you know, we know it's important. We talk about it, me and you, a lot, especially going on the road, right? Week one, uh, you know, excitement, the crowd against you, special teams. Well, how would you describe yeah. that, right? No, it's a critical third of, of the of the game. and. You know, the one thing about us is we are a more talented and deep football team, which helps improve your special teams units. So we got guys that are starting or worse, worse starters uh, at po previous points of their careers that's on special teams that have bought into the philosophy that they can make a tremendous difference on special teams. And then our specialists, we got I think we got really, really good uh, specialists. Um, Tom Foley is back as our, as our punter. Uh, has the ability to be an all-conference type punter with his big leg and ability to position the ball uh, with certain uh, punts. Um, you know, uh, Isaac Hatfield is our long snapper. Um, you know, the thing about Isaac is you never notice him, which is a good thing when you're a long snapper. And then Jake Seibert, uh, transferred from Ohio State, has come in and done a phenomenal job, has a tremendous leg, uh, you know, gives us the ability to uh, stretch the field uh, in the regards of, you know, our ability to kick field goals. Has a strong leg from, you know, 50-plus out. Uh, we feel very confident uh, with that. And and so that gives us a chance to do some dif different things offensively and defensively uh, where we can pick and choose when we want to be aggressive uh, and when we want to kick field goals. Yeah, let's talk about Boston College. On the road Saturday. Last season, again, that was last season, but their record last year was three and nine. And I want to start with their offense. Um, and they're, they're starting this quarterback, Emmett Moorhead, who got a couple games in late in the season. It's a team that couldn't run the ball on the offensive side. But how would you describe the, what you know about Boston College offense going into Saturday? No, I think very similar to us. Uh, you saw a team that dealt with injuries last year. I know they had quite a few injuries up front uh, and they're getting some guys back. So, I'm sure that would be a, a, a rebuilt unit um, offensively. I think um, last year they, they probably had to do what they had to do to try to, you know, win games and, and maneuver. I, I, I do think uh, I feel like they will try to come come out and try to establish the run uh, and try to look for balance uh, offensively. Uh, quarterback is a very good player, uh, has the ability to, uh, you know, stretch the ball down the field. They got some a transfer wide receiver from uh, UCF. Who, who can really create some problems. Uh, they got two running backs that are really good players. Uh, their right guard, as I said earlier, is a guy that's projected to be a, you know, first round draft pick. So uh, that, that, that gives you a pillar to build around up front. So I think you, you will see a vastly improved football team, um, you know, that dealt with injuries a year ago. And uh, we excited to get, you know, for the opportunity to go out there and play. Defensively, what can we expect from BC? 
No, I mean, defensively, they was really strong mm -hmm. defensively. They can create pressure uh, from a four down front or they can blitz you. Uh, you know, obviously, I think they'll miss number 97 from last year. He's a good player. Uh, but number six, the other defensive end, uh, I'm sure, you know, they have a plan for him to create havoc. Uh, they got linebackers that play downhill and physical. Um, they have big guys in the secondary that can uh, lock you down and play man coverage. So uh, we have a tremendous challenge offensively to uh, figure out ways to create uh, advantages for us to try to move the ball. Um, but this is a good defensive unit. I know they lost a, a defensive coordinator, um, but their head coach is a defensive guy. And I'm sure, you know, schematically there'll be some tweaks. Um, but but I expect an aggressive defense uh, come Saturday. When I've had the chance to talk to you getting ready for this season, Thomas, you've been excited about what you put together with this program. Talented wise, talent wise, uh, leadership wise, I think you're happy too, Thomas. But to just get ready for finally a game and be game day now, what expectations or what excites you most about your football team as we get ready for Boston College? You know, the thing that can, excites me the most is the consistent mindset. Um, you know, uh, our guys are. They understand uh, the task at hand, but they understand the preparation matters. And Saturday is just the opportunity to display what you've been preparing for since January uh, and, and the maturity that comes about that understand that, you you know, there's no music, uh, there's no pep, pep talk that's going to get you ready to play. Okay. Uh, and I think these guys understand that. They understand the work that they put in uh, and the execution that it takes to go win a football game is what needs to be displayed on Saturday. Coach, looking forward to it, making the trip to Boston. Uh, good luck and really good luck to the season. Looking forward to it. And uh, I know you have high expectations and uh, can't wait to see what happens here in 2023. Appreciate it. And go Huskies. Great to hear from Thomas Hammock. Again, starting year number five, taking on Boston College, hoping Huskies can go on the road, get a win. We'll be there on Saturday. So you may have heard Bill Baker, the only voice of the Huskies most of us have known to retire after this uh, football season. But what a good opportunity to hear some, some of his stories. I had the chance to sit down with him, uh, just kind of pick his brain. Um, and we're going to do that throughout the season. And we're going to get one here, looking back with Bill Baker. So today we're going to go back to the beginning and find out how Bill got his start as a broadcaster. Well, throughout the football season, we get the chance to look back, pick the brain, uh, Bill Baker, Husky's voice for more than 44 years, the voice you've heard behind the headset for that long. And, Bill, are you ready for this segment? Are you ready for all these questions I've got for you? No, sir. You know, I, uh, I've i probably forgotten more than I remember. <laughs> but we'll do the best we can. All right, so my first one of the series, Bill, is how did you begin in sports broadcasting? Where did it all begin for you? Well, you know, you have to kind of give you a little history, I guess. It began, I was probably eight years old. I was probably maybe eight or 10 years old. I was your quintessential radio junkie. I was the kid who went to sleep at night with the uh, the transistor radio tucked under his pillow. And I wasn't listening to WLS back then. I was I was listening to whoever carried the White Sox. And if they were on the road, whoever carried the Cubs, because at night, the Cubs didn't play at, uh, at night back at, uh, at Ridley Field. And I had that thing pressed up to my ear. And, you know, somewhere along the line, Andy, it just, it just, I just got to the point, I thought, you know, this might be something fun. And then there was a guy by the name of Jack Quinlan. I don't know if you ever called him, but uh, did play-by-play -play for the Cubs for a number of years, tragically taken away in a, in a vehicle accident during spring training a long, long time ago. But I listened to him. And this guy, if, if you want to pattern me after anybody else, listen to him, listen to me. And I think you'll find some similarities. But he was the guy that really made me think, hey, this is something – that I am going to do. Now, you know, you have to fast forward. Wayne Tech High School, when I got in there in 1962, pretty good football team. Somehow I convinced them to let me record the games, just, just with audio. We didn't have any video or anything, and play them back in the lunchroom during the next week to kind of foster enthusiasm. <laughs> well, never mind the fact that the lunchroom had 350, 400 guys in it at a time, and you couldn't hear anything. But it was a start. It was fun. Fast forward again up to uh, what was Illinois Teachers College, Chicago North. The Golden Eagles now became, uh, uh, what was it, Northeastern Illinois State College. And I talked with them, and we started recording the games through their uh, cable system, and uh, we did the audio. We had some fun with the doggone thing, and all of a sudden, we played Judson University or Judson College back in the day. 
And a guy by the name of Dave Clark comes out. He's from WGSB in Geneva. They were following, they were following Judson doing their games. I sat next to him, you know, we did our broadcast, and and at the end of the game, he said, I'll be in touch with you. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, that was probably February of uh, whatever year that would have been, 1968, August of 1968, he calls and he says, Listen, we're going to uh, we're going to start broadcasting the uh, the sophomore games for high school football. Would you like to come out and do the thing? We'll pay you 20 bucks a game. <laughs> 20. There it began. You know, there, there's the hook, there's the bait, and there's me swallowing the doggone thing. There was no turning back after that. That's awesome. Again, I was kind of like the same way, right, Bill? Listening early in my career, getting into sports. But, okay, so you're, you're turning into a sports broadcaster, but – what would you have been, Bill, if you weren't a sports broadcaster? What, what else would Bill Baker have been? Yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> I, I think back when I was six, seven, eight years old, I used to think about that when I was that young. And I lived on the west side of Chicago, close to the old L that extended uh, just north of what is now the Eisenhower. Today, it's in the middle of the Eisenhower. Before then, it was up a couple of blocks north, or no, a couple of blocks south, actually, and uh, we'd go over there whenever we were going to take the L downtown. And there was this old guy sitting in the station, and he was selling magazines and comics and candy and soft drinks, just making change for people. I remember thinking to myself, you know, that's something I could probably handle. That's something I could do. So, you know, and really, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do uh, and, until the uh, – uh, until the sports bug bit me. But I tell you, over the years, I spent four years of the Air Force. Uh, and did a abundance of different things. I, I spent a year in Vietnam, 368 days to, uh, to be exact. You probably don't know. Maybe you do. I was once uh, a ring announcer, not for the World Wrestling Federation, for their predecessor, which I think was the World Wrestling Association, but I'm not sure so long ago. They used to come in and, and play the Rosemont Horizon, and I worked with all the guys. I mean, I worked with Hogan, I worked with Jake the Snake, I work with, uh, you know, the uh, the Russians and and the Libyans and, you know, you just name it. They were Andre the Giant, guy that stepped over the ropes, you know, to get into the ring. And there was another one that came in and worked at the uh, the UIC Pavilion with their shows. And, and back in the day, the state had a supply of the ring announcers. That's how I got into that thing. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I've got a, a, a spit for, for ring announcing. I, I had no idea, but I just thought that I've, I've had an unusual life. I've had a life to where it... Uh, no two days, sometimes no two years have been the same, Andy. And it's, it eventually led me to NIU. Uh, 44 years later, we're having this conversation. Great stuff. Again, this is just uh, part number one of our series with Bill Baker, Voice of the Huskies. We look back, his fantastic career, and how it began uh, back at the age of eight, starting to think about it, and now what he's become, the voice of NIU. More to come as we continue this segment and continue this series with the Voice of the Huskies, Bill Baker. It's a fun segment looking back with Bill Baker again. It was really fun to kind of record a lot of those and uh, just remember some of the memories, even hear some of the memories I haven't even heard about Bill Baker, Bill Baker and having 44 seasons. And again, we're going to have that throughout the NIU weeklies and also throughout the season here. So it's going to be fun to hear other memories, hear other things about what Bill Baker's had and, and, and gone through in his career here at NIU. So we're going to look at some of the upcoming schedules to wrap things up this week on NIU weekly. And again, a lot of the teams are on the road, uh, West, uh, women's cross country is at Western Illinois on Friday. September 1st, volleyball is down in Davidson, North Carolina, taking on UNC Wilmington in the Wildcat, Wildcat Classic and then taking on Davidson on Saturday. Men's soccer is in action at Notre Dame on Friday, 6 p.m. Uh, we talked about football. That's coming up. We'll talk more about that before we leave. Women's soccer is at Indiana at 6 p.m. Uh, and But then on Monday, September 4th, Men's soccer host Aurora, only home event of the week. That's 7 p.m. Monday night. So Monday, September 4th, men's soccer host Aurora. And again, we talked about football, taking on Boston College. We'll be on the air, radio, 1030 a.m., kickoff 11 a.m. Central on ACC Network TV, NIU taking on Boston College. But we really want you, after we go done with Boston College, we come back home, we want to see a lot of you at Husky Stadium on Saturday, September 9th, 2.30 p.m. for the NIU football home opener, taking on Southern Illinois. You know SIU is going to bring a lot of fans to Husky Stadium. It's time to show out and show up. Tailgat lot, tailgate lots open five hours before the game. The yard's going to be hopping, live band, and it's high school band day. So make your plans now. Get out to Husky Stadium on September 9th, 
2.30 p.m. kick. It's NIU taking on Southern Illinois. So we appreciate you watching NIU Weekly this week. Don't forget, subscribe to this channel, NIU Athletics. We're going to have a lot of shows, highlights, different interviews, different things. So you definitely want to subscribe and know when something's coming up here on the YouTube page on NIU Huskies, NIU Athletics. It's going to be a fun year. We appreciate Thomas Hammock. Looking forward and uh, talking about Boston College, looking, past, looking back at preseason. Hopefully, and you can get a win on the road this week at BC. And always special thanks to Bill Baker for doing our new segment we're doing this week, uh, this season, looking back with Bill Baker. Till next week, hopefully Husky teams can get some wins. We'll talk to you. Get ready for SIU. Until then, go Huskies.